सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्तु सहवीर्यं करवावहै तेजस्विना अधीतमस्तु मा ओम शांति 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 ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमाद य पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त ओम भद्रंकर्णे विष्णुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येमाक्षजत्रा स्थिंगुवागुंसस्तनो व्यशेम देवहित यदा स्वस्ति न इंद्र वृद्ध्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नक्ष्यो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा शांति 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 warm water by the way it was really sticky <coughs> interesting next mantra bhashika says tatva nirdharanam cha prakarantarana kriyate in this upanishad the tatva the truth has been discussed in various ways so somebody may ask you seem to be repeating yourself same tatva same truth param brahma seems to be uh, delineated from one mantra to the other from one section to the other atyant durgahi durgahi tvat because the tatva is extremely difficult to grasp therefore krutam api tatra therefore even though you may have expounded it once twice several times still it is never too much because the tatva is sukshma adi sukshmam subtler than subtlest 
Therefore, it is not easy to grasp or retain or contemplate upon. Therefore, different ways are provided to us for contemplating variously upon the tattva. <coughs> and now we come to the next mantra, a very famous mantra. <coughs> so I am reading that. Dvasuparna Sayuja Sakaya Samanam Bruksham Parishasva Jate Tayoranyaha Pippalam Swadhati Anashnan Anyaha Avichakashiti Dva Suparana Sayuja Sakaya. Dva Suparano Sayuja Sakaya. Grammatically, this is a dual of the nominative. So, the dual should be Dva Suparano Rama Rama. So, Dva Suparano Sayuja Sakaya. Here we have what? Dva Suparana Sayuja Sakaya. So again, this is Chandasa Prayoga, meaning this is a, irregular as far as the Pani grammar is concerned. So what we should understand is Dvau Sayujau Suparanau Sayujau Sakhayau. <coughs> Dvau to Suparanau birds Sayujau that are ever associated with each other Sakhayau and have similar names. Sakha means friends. So Sakha is so samana khyati yesham. Those with the same kind of uh, expression, manifestation, always utter together. Krishna, Arjuna, Samvade. So Krishna and Arjuna are always, you know, utter together. So there are these two birds, which are supernomies, having beautiful bird, I mean, feathers. Sayujau, always joined with each other, always associated with each other, yukta, associated with each other, meaning that those who are never separate from each other. Sakhayu, who are friends. Or Sakha means samana khyati, those who have similar names, or those who are like friends. <coughs> Two birds having beautiful feathers who are always together, never separated from each other, and who are always together and then they are all referred to as together. Samanam, Riksham, Parishasvajate, Parishasvajate, cling to, meaning that they are living, dwelling, and holding on to Samana Vruksham, the same same self tree. So this is a very famous uh, imagery describing the two birds of the nature of Jiva and Ishvara. This is one of those mantras which often presented as an evidence that the Upanishad is teaching duality. Look, right here Upanishad itself says there are two birds. One bird is a Jiva bird, other bird is the Ishvara bird. And therefore the duality of Jiva and Ishvara talk right here. Now this mantra is often mentioned in support of the conclusion that the Upanishad is teaching duality. Where Jiva and Ishvara are different. If you remember, we did the other mantra also. Yatha Sudiptat Pavakat Visfalingaha. Just as from a fully ablaze fire, countless sparks emerge. So that mantra is often quoted as Ishvara is the cause and Jivas are the effect. Ishvara is one, Jivas are many, Ishvara is whole, Jivas are part. 
So, like this, like this sparks and fire. The relationship is the part and whole. That is called Vishishtad Advaita. This is where Jiva and Ishvara are looked upon as totally different from each other is Dvaitam. Where Jiva is looked upon as part of Ishvara is Advaitam all right but still qualified non-duality meaning that they are one and still separate. It's called Vishishta Advaitam. And the Jiva and Ishwar are identical with no difference whatever is the Advaitam or non-duality. So we say mantras are interpreted <coughs> by different acharyas to arrive at different conclusions. But Swamiji, how come this happens? They ask this question, the texts are the same. How is it that these great acharyas have drawn different conclusions that one acharya is teaching like Shankaracharya is Advaitam, Kevala Advaitam, absolute non-duality. Ramanuja Acharya teaches the qualified Advaitam, part and whole. And Madhva Acharya and others teach Advaitam that they are totally different from each other. So, this mantra at the first sight, seem to say that the Jiva and Ishvara are different, two different words. The earlier mantra of the fire and spark also at the first sight seem to say that just as sparks are part of fire, Jivas are part of Ishvara. And still Bhashyakara showed how this mantra, in fact, the fire and spark mantra also only teaches a non-duality that the sparks appear different from fire, the sparks appear different from each other, but really the difference is not in the fire, the difference in upadhi, little particle of wood that creates an, a, a notion of separation, but there is no separation whatever in fire. So also all the jivas appear to be separate from each other. But when you analyze what is the essential nature of what you call jiva, it is nothing but consciousness, and consciousness is one, undivided. So here also the jiva and ishvara appear to be different as though. Then why do they say like that, Swami? If what the Upanishads want to convey is non-duality, why is the description given as though there is duality? That is because that is what we think it is. Since we think that we, I, the jiva, is different from Ishvara. And why am I different? Because who am I? I'm just a little insignificant creature with limited knowledge, limited power, everything limited. And who is Ishvara? omniscient, omnipotent, you know, and they are boundless in every way. How can this to be the same? And that's how this is complex and always been entertaining. That I am different from Jishwara, I am different from you, I am different from everything. <clears throat> and it is that notion that's what Upanishad is working on trying to explain to us the reason why that notion is created in us. There is a reason. Like an actor putting on the costume of a beggar and then before coming to stage looking at himself in the mirror to see how he's dressed. And he sees a beggar in the mirror, concludes that I'm a beggar. The reason for conclusion, that's what appears in the mirror. Who am I? A beggar? And so uh, then he has to be taught that this is a notion. And so looking at the mirror, at the mirror of the upadhi, this body, mind, sense complex is my upadhi, is my costume. And look at the mirror in the mind, and what do I find? 
I find this limited individual. Just as the actor finds a beggar in there, therefore I conclude that I am a small, little, insignificant creature. There is something small, something insignificant. What is it? This body, mind, sense, complex is small, is insignificant. And regardless of how great I try to make, it will remain insignificant. And they were trying to make this body great, my mind great, intellect great, ego great. This poor human being never becomes free from the sense of insignificance anyway. That is because I'm all the time evaluating myself based on my costume. So based on the costume, looks like that there are two birds. One is a Jiva bird, other is the Ishvara bird. Been looked upon from this kind of costume. But then, the way the description is, Dvau, Suparanau, Sayujau, Sakhayau, two birds, always together, having the same manifestation, same description, they are always friends, always together. Now, is it possible? The two entities can always be together. Is it possible that two separate entities can always be together? If there are two, then this fellow wants to eat, the other fellow may not want to eat, this fellow wants to go forward, the other fellow wants to go backward. Some, Sometimes this can happen, is it not so? If there are really two, it's not possible that they have a total synchronism all the time, otherwise there is no two. But they are two and still always synchronized. See, always synchronized is real or two is real. So other teachers say that the two is real. Vedantin says the synchronism is real. Sayujav, Sakhayav, always associated with each other, connected to each other, always friends having the same khyati or expression that shows that, in fact, there is one appearing as two. So from this description, Vedantin comes to this conclusion that even though out, open, outwardly it is said two, it wants to explain our conclusion in our life. Where I am always searching for some goal in my life. The search for the goal is not different from the tenth man searching for the tenth man. Because if I analyze, I never stop to think and analyze, but I stop to think and analyze what is it that I am seeking, seeking in my life? What do I want? Until I realize that what I want is myself. And thus, the duality is not a reality. Duality is a notion created because of my conclusion that I am a limited being. I am separate from others. But Swami, I am separate from us. What do you mean you are not separate from us? And I am separate from you. Depends on who you call I. The body is called I, certainly you are separate. The mind is called I, certainly you are separate. Depending on who you call I. You call yourself as I. Consciousness as I. Then consciousness is bound to be at all. In that case, there is no separation. There is no two-ness. There is no duality. So our notion that I am different from you and I am different from Ishwara, that notion is called Anuvada, is reiterated here. There are, so you should, as though there are two birds. So when as though we should add. Why is it so? Because we have concluded that there are two. That Jiva is different, Ishwara is different, you are different, I am different. That is my conclusion. So begin from that conclusion. To help us arrive at where we should go or where we should reach. <coughs> Samanam Ruksham Parishasvajate. They cling to the same tree, this body, 
What is Upadi is called the tree here. And this Jiva and Ishvara, both of them are dwelling on this tree of this body, mind, sense complex Upadi. Swamiji, you mean there are two? In the heart there are two? Says, Jiva bird and Ishvara bird. You mean there are Jiva and Ishvara, both of them are separate entities who are dwelling in this body? No, in fact, what is dwelling is one, but thought to be two. In Kathopanishad also, Rutam Pivanto Sukruta Siloke, Guham Praveshto Parame Parardhe. Some similar description comes as though in one Guha, in one cave, two entities are dwelling. One is both of them enjoying karma phala, one is karma phala data, other is karma phala bhokta. The Jiva and Ishvara, both of them are dwelling together. Two entities cannot dwell together in one, and therefore it is what is one which is thought to be two. So this is how sometimes when the Upanishad is two, that two is nothing but what Anuvada is just reiterating what I am saying to help me understand that, hey, what you think too is really one. So this is a very typical mantra. Dvau suparnau sayujau sakhayau samana vruksham parishashva jate You are clinging to the same tree of this body-mind-sense complex. All right. Now further describing these two words, Tayoho Anyaha, one of these two, Piplam Svadvati, one of these birds, Atti, eats or enjoys. Piplam means phalam, various kinds of fruits. One of the birds enjoys various kinds of fruits. Apparently, in this tree has many branches. Adas Chordam Prasutastasya Shakaha. Una pravurdha vishya pravala adasya mulani anusantatani karma anubandhini manusya loke. Sound familiar? Did it sound familiar? No. Urdhu mulam adasyakam ashvatham prahu avyam. At hope when he said, The 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which we are supposedly reciting every day before the meals. <coughs> In the very first verse, Urdhvamulam, Urdhvamulam, this tree of samsara with the roots above, Adashakam, where is the branch is spreading below. Have you ever seen a tree? Its roots above, branches below. No, not in a physical sense. We already mentioned this once before. Above does not mean above with reference to space, above in terms of the reality. Typically in India, when you go to a government office, when you want, you just go above. Government is go to higher authority. But above may be sitting below. Meaning that even the higher authority, the office could be below. And since it's called above, the typical word that the government people use, go above, means go to higher authority. Above does not mean in terms of space, it means in terms of authority. Here also, Urdhulam, this tree of samsara that we experience has its root above. Above means not in terms of space, in terms of reality. Then the samsara that we see is constantly changing. Everything in the world is constantly changing. And so it is perishable. So it has an origin. It will have an end someday. Everything is constantly changing. Everything is limited. What is the truth of the samsara that is changing and that is limited? Urdhvam. So limitlessness is 
the truth of the samsara that is limited. The changelessness is the truth of samsara that is constantly changing. It's unbelievable. Nobody ever thinks so. And there are many people are also thrown off. Because those who uh, believe that the cause must be compatible, so infer the cause compatible effect, they can never infer that the cause of the limited can be limitless. Limitless can be the cause of limited. Nobody can ever imagine. Meaning that if you want to arrive at the reality of the world with your own intellect, it is very confused and misguiding. So Upanishad says that of this limited universe, the truth is limitless. Urdhvam. <coughs> so that is a vruksha. Not only the body also, but then the samsara also is a vruksha. <coughs> Urdhvamulam adashakam ashvatham. The tree is called ashvatha. Ashvatha is a particular tree, a people tree. But shvaha means tomorrow. Shvastam, shvattam is that which will be there tomorrow. Ashvattam, of which the existence tomorrow also is uncertain. Ashvatta means that of which existence tomorrow is uncertain. That which is changing, perishable. Meaning that the city of samsara is constantly changing. It is perishable. <coughs> And many things go with that tree. So samana vruksham parishashvajate. These two birds, jiva and ishvara. Ishvara, that interpretation also is there in Brahma Sutra. It is uh, Brahman and Buddhi and stuff like that. So whatever. Uh, so, but this is simple explanation. Jiva and Ishvara. <coughs> Brahma Sutra is its own agenda. And so uh, has to follow certain other kind of... Uh, uh, what shall I say, uh, reasoning pattern, etc. Tayo anya pipalam swadvati. One of them, the jiva, is flying from one branch to the other, experiencing different kinds of fruits. So, what are these branches? Adas Chordam Prasutas Tasya Shakaha Guna Pravridha Vishaya Pravalaha. He repeat the verses, but we don't, uh, I think, we don't remember what we are repeating. This Vruksha, Urdhamulam, Adas Shakam, the tree of samsara, of fish, the root is above. The branches are spread below. In that branches, adas chodham, prasutaha, tasya shakha, this branches also go up and down and middle. These branches are nothing but the various embodiments. Some embodiments are higher. Some embodiments are middling. Some other embodiments are below. So being a human being, there are embodiments such as devatas who are higher. There are embodiments like the birds and animals who are lower. Human beings are in the middle. Adas chordham cha prasutas tasya shakaha guna pravuddhaha vishya pravalaha etc. So this is the tree that these two birds, Jiva and Ishvara, they are clinging to this tree. <coughs> of them, the bird that is jiva is pipalam swadvati. It enjoys or experience, I shouldn't say enjoy, but then experiences various kinds of the fruits of different tastes. It is not that fruit always is sweet. The fruit can be sour also. Fruit can be bitter also, is it not so? Depends on your karma. 
So you think this is a sweet fruit and turns out when you are somewhere traveling in the Himalayas and uh, you know, we don't know the, the various vegetation. Sometimes the fruits look good. You are very tempted. When you taste, it's bitter. Sometimes sour. Sometimes sweet, depends upon your luck. And so also this word called jiva, that is you and I, he is experiencing fruits. What is fruit? The karma phala. Fruit is the fruit of the action. Each one is experiencing different kinds of fruits because each one has performed different kinds of actions. Each one has its own unique history. So whatever we are experiencing at any moment is the karma phala, a result of some action or the other that we have performed. And why do we take different embodiments? Because in this embodiment, if my desires are not satisfied, then to satisfy the remaining desire, I take other embodiment. Because the experiences that human upadhi can give are limited. You can't experience what a bird is experiencing. You cannot experience what a fish is experiencing. You cannot experience what a dog is experiencing. Not that, but you know, sometimes that also looks very dear depending on the state of your mind. Uh, or in Atma Puranam, Swami Shankaranji says that when the jiva depart from this body, what he says then? He has a glimpse of what the next embodiment is going to be. So right now I am in human upadhi. If my karma determines that my next upadhi will be a dog, let us say. Hopefully it's not so, but then. Who will want to take up that upadhi? But he says, no, when this jiva atma is ready to depart from this aperture of the heart, at that time he has a glimpse of what the next upadhi will be and, or, and then right away there is also a love for the upadhi. So when he departs, he loves that what dog, bear, whatever it is, hog, fog, whatever it is that he is going to be, his, his love for the upadhi is developed and then he goes happily. Right now somebody says, Swamiji, next upadhi is going to be dog, I will hate it but not when I'm departing. Then, there is a love for whatever that embodiment is going to be, and therefore, happily I take that embodiment. Anyway, that's immaterial. But this is how the, from one branch to the other. Here, branch is one upadhi, one embodiment is branch. And there are how many embodiments, how many species are there? They talk of 8.4 million species, you know, 8.4 million births. You heard 84 lakhs. There is nothing. Now when we discover so many kinds of different kinds of insects, you know, we find that there are countless. How many kinds of flies may be there? How many kinds of cra crafts may be there? There are countless kinds of different embodiments. They may have counted at one point. I arrived at 8.4 million, which is also a large number, but whatever it is, a large number, large choice is there. <clears throat> when you depart from this body, Ishwara has a big uh, showroom with variety of costumes. When you go to a big showroom with different costumes and you, you like to buy something, what can you buy? It depends upon how much money you have in your pocket. Similarly, in Ishwara's uh, showroom, there are millions of dress costumes are there. Which one can I buy? Depending upon what kind of money I have in my pocket. What is that money? There is karma. Punya karma. And therefore, I do contend with whatever I get with my punya karma. And that's how different kinds of embodiments are there. In every embodiment, that is the experience is different. Pippalam Swadvati, one of the birds goes from one branch to the other. Every branch represents an embodiment. So countless branches are there, countless embodiments are there. And depending on the karma that is performed, 
मैं स्वामी जी सपोज दिस जीवात्मा हैज बिकम ए डॉग देन व्हाट अबाउट द नेक्स्ट एम्बॉडीमेंट मीन्स डॉग डजेंट परफॉर्म एनी डेलीबरेट एक्शंस मीनिंग दैट ओनली ह्यूमन बीइंग अर्न्स कर्म फला पुण्य पापा no other embodiment there is a deliberate action there ever even though a cat may kill a mouse it is not pap karma otherwise fellow will never come out of it no pap karma it is just instinctive if you will me i kill you and then it's pap karma because i have freedom not to do that so but swami is there for other creatures don't perform deliberate karma so how will they go from one embodiment to the other dog does not perform deliberate karma so when the dog dies where will he go who will decide what will decide his next <coughs> embodiment and so is that when you depart from here it is not very relevant here because pipalam swadvati this jivatma experience is the fruits of variety of states in variety of embodiments so what decides the course of his birth series of birth and death the karma which karma when this jiva departs from here and the whole sequence of his travel is decided until he comes back so karma most uh, powerful karma will immediately determine what this fellow experience is the next powerful karma then next powerful karma then next powerful karma ultimately he'll come back to human birth he will and then again he'll start this cycle because he has to be given a chance of moksha and moksha is possible only in the human birth so after experiencing all sorts of things come back to human birth tayo anya pipalam swadvati one one of the birds the jiva bird performs variety of actions creates for himself variety of results or karma phalas and each phala is of a different taste so this is the phala that is the phala every embodiment is a phala and that's what he experiences so this is the story of jivatma one bird when all this is happening what does the next bird do anasnan anya abhichakashiti the other one abhichakashiti just looks on anasnan without eating while this bird is fluttering from branch to branch experiencing variety of uh, fruits of variety of tastes sometimes happy sometimes unhappy more unhappy than happy unfortunately and the puja swami to say have you heard him dukham 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 sukham dukham 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 sukham have you heard him It's an old and is i not recently heard but anyway dukham 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 sukham what does it mean pain 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 pleasure pain 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 pleasure but let the pleasure that will come sometime motivates him to go through whatever experiences come and that's why he goes through all this pain hoping that some pleasure will come so this is a story of jivat asnan he is a bhokta asnan means he is eating means enjoying experiencing phalam is karma phala he is experiencing so he performs karma he earns for himself karma phala the result of the actions and he experiences variety of results of action anya the other bird anasnan without eating abhichak asiti just looks on other bird just looks on doesn't do anything hey come on don't do this this, this bird should be better than just looking on you know this is not fair other bird is param brahma brahma parmatma 
look son, it's not fair. Hey, come on, don't do this. Do that. Should he not say that? You know the, you know the tenth man story? Where one who is searching for is also tenth man. So where is tenth man? Right here. Is it not so? He sees this fellow searching for tenth man. Why doesn't he say, hey, I am tenth man here. Why are you searching there? doesn't say that. You know what I am saying? The tenth man is sitting right in the heart. It is very self. And still does not declare, hey, you are searching for time when I am here, look at me. So also this poor Jiva Atma is always searching for happiness. Atma says, hey, come on, I am here. <clears throat> Unfair, is it not so? Even though it is close at hand, closer than closest, Durat Sudhure Tadihanti Gaja. For an ignorant person, tenth man is farther than farthest. For the one who comes to know, he is closer than the closest. Ignorance creates a vast distance as though, and knowledge eliminates that false distance. <coughs> but this Ishvara or Brahma bird or Brahma bird doesn't say anything. Abhichaka Siti just looks on. Ishvara looks on. Paramatma looks on. Is it fair? When you find this fellow is doing wrong things, should he not say, come on, stop doing it? Doesn't say that. He permits. Upadhyashtana manta cha bharata bhokta maheshwara paramatma ityapyukta desmin purusha paraha Verse from Bhagavad Gita, anybody heard? Anybody knows where it comes from? 13th chapter, very much, very good. Upadrashta, Upadrashta means the one who is proximate seer, who is seeing everything proximately. Anumantacha, but permits everything. His fellow goes in wrong direction, permits him. Does wrong action, permits him. Right action, permits him. Bharata Bhokta, so therefore this Paramatma is sitting here watching everything, blessing everything. Because without him the consciousness, nothing can be done. So meaning that whatever the jiva is able to do is because of the presence of consciousness naturally. Shrotra Sashrotra means only because of his presence that the faculty of hearing they function. He is able to see, hear, do whatever he is able to do is because of the presence of the self consciousness, Paramatma. Anumanta. But he just gives permission to whatever he wants to see. Why doesn't he say, Come on, you're seeing it, looking at the wrong thing? Look this way. No. You see what I'm saying? Ishvara is closer than closest. And still, he doesn't say anything. Abhichaka He just looks on. Looks on means not even looks on. Not that he has eyes and he keeps on and looks on. Then he'll get tired. No, he looks on. Just he is. The conscious presence. Looks on means what? He keeps blessing. It is in the presence of him, that is the Paramatma, the consciousness, that the jiva does whatever he does, good, bad or indifferent. Anasnananyaha. Abhichaka Shiti. The story of our life. Samane Vrakshe Purusho Nimagnaha. Next verse says, Samane Vrakshe Purusho Nimagnaha. Anishaya Shochati Mukhyamana. Samane Vrakshe. The same tree, same body, same heart. Both of them are dwelling, meaning that Jiva is dwelling where the Paramatma is dwelling. You are in company. Which company? You are in great company. Whose company? Of Bhagavan, of Paramatma. Sayuja, Sakhaya, never separate. Always utter together because whenever I say I am a Jiva, that I am also is there. And Jiva also is there. I am a human being. I am also there. Human being is also there. So both are uttered together. I am is that. And human being is this Jiva. 
Meaning the jiva cannot exist without Paramatma. So I say, I'm happy. Happy is the nature, is the, comes from jivatma. I'm happy. I am is that one who is always happy. I am, is, he imparts I am to everything. Happy and happy, good, bad, say, sinner. He blesses, he sustains, supports. So he says, I am, I am, I am. Who is that I am? The other bird. Sukhi, dukhi, happy and happy, good, bad. Who is that? this bird? Jiva. Always together. Never separate. Because a jiva can never be without the Ishvara. The happy and happy, etc. cannot be without, is blessed by I am, the consciousness and existence. And that I am accompanies, always watching, and this fellow then becomes happy and happy, karta, bhakta, sukhi, dukhi, aham karta, aham bhakta, aham sukhi, that aham asmi is always there. The bird is all, because they are always together. Never separated. And Abhichaka Shiti always watches, always blesses. In that sense, the Sukhi also is blessed by I am. Dukhi also is blessed by I am. You know, if I am does not bless, if that I am does not impart existence and awareness, then the Sukhi, Dukhi, nothing can exist. And so, Anashnan, but then I am does not participate. Sukhi, Dukhi, this Jivatma keeps sounding variety of things that I am without participating, blesses him, enables him to do whatever he wants, but does not participate, does not help him. I mean, does not correct him, does not guide him. He always blesses him. Always together. Dva Suparana, Sayuja Sakaya. I am is one, Sukhi is another one. What is Sukhi? One word, Jivatma. I am Paramatma. Always together. Can never be separate because Jiva cannot exist without Paramatma. But this fellow is so busy looking here and there that he fails to appreciate the way I am the closer than the closest. The most proximate that I am is ignored. And he's out there, Abhicha, you know, Aswadvat, all kinds of fruits and all kinds of things he experiences. And not satisfied with what is available in this embodiment, goes to next embodiment. Not satisfied there, goes to a third embodiment. Samane Vrakshe Purusho Nimagnaha, even though he is residing with Ishvara. With Brahman, with Paramatma, Purushaha, Nivagnaha, Anishaya, Shoshati, Mukhyamana, this Purushaha, this Jivatma feels always helpless, Anishaya. Shoshati always grieves. Mukhyamana experiencing a variety of notions about himself. So the, who I am, the notion keeps changing. Sometimes I didn't wear the body, I said I'm a woman or a man. I identify with my intellect as I'm a doctor or an engineer. I identify with some years. I keep on, you know, declaring different uh, <coughs> names, different identifications. Samane Vrakshe Purusho Nimagdaha Anishaya Shochati always feels helpless. So one thing about this poor jiva is in the life, helplessness. Why helplessness, Swami? Because I have desire. It's desire that makes me helpless. There's no desire, there is no helplessness. When I have desire, then I want something. I want something all right, but then I do not have freedom to fulfill my desire. It is someone else whose favor I need to fulfill my desire. Is it not so? Please look at me now. That's up to you whether to look at me or not. Please give me a smile. You will decide whether to give me a smile or not. Swamiji is not looking at me. Have you heard this complaint? This Swami, I don't know whether you heard or not. All Swami is here then. 
Puja Swamiji uh, said, but when I'm looking at you, looking down, what can I do, you know? <laughs> There's old stuff going on, you know, nothing new. But what I want doesn't happen. What I'm saying is helpless. So when I have a desire, then I become helpless because I become dependent upon someone who has to fulfill my desire. Anisha shows it. Anisha. Anisha means what? He is helpless. So helplessness is one of the constant tunes, shruti going on in the life of the human being. Mukhyamanaha entertaining variety of notions about himself. Now karta, then vokta, now man, then woman, now father, then mother, and so forth. <coughs> in each of these notions, one thing is, one current, and that is limitedness, helplessness. So this is the story of one of the birds. The other bird is the very goal that I am seeking. Yushtam yada pashitanyam isham asya mahimanati Then when he sees his true glory, he recognizes that my true nature is what? Asti bhati priyam. Not karta, not bhokta. Then I'm all right, karta, I'm okay. Bhokta, all right. Sukhi, all right. But that is what? That is just temporary. That is not my essential nature. There is something that is incidental. Who am I essentially? I am, I am, I am. That's essentially what I am. On that, this man, woman, karta, bhokta, they come and go, they go incidental, you know. Just as in this part, there is something essential and something incidental. What is essential? Kule, wow. What is incidental? Form and name is incidental. Because if this thing falls from my hand, it will break into pieces. Its name and form will change, but the fact that it is clay will not change. Take a hammer and powder it. Still the fact that it is clay does not change. The name and form keep on changing. So what should I identify with? If I choose to identify the name and form, then I'm helpless because I depend upon others to maintain the name and form. I didn't with the clay, I'm indestructible. Name and form, I'm perishable, destructible, dependent, helpless. So here also, what is it that I should identify with? One word, mukhyadi. So, because I'm identified with this upadhi, and they always feel a sense of helplessness. And that identification also keeps on changing now. I didn't know the body and thinking one way for myself. With the mind thinking different way. Intellect thinking third way. And mind keeps on changing. Everything keeps on changing. Body also changes. Depends upon where I identify with. Our Swami used to say that every part of the body creates the complex. From here on, from top to the toe, complex. Whether I, I have hair or not. If I have, then what's the color of the hair? If I have, then what is the density of the hair? So many complexes. Then come here, eyebrows, other source of complex. Nose, thirst is a complex. Every part of the body he is a potential source of complex and they have a potential source of unhappiness. <clears throat> this one body creates so much problem. The stomach also is a problem. Height also is a problem. Weight also is a problem. Width also is a problem. Depth also is a etc. etc. Mukhyamana. <clears throat> Entertaining variety of complexes about oneself because 
he has fallen into identification with this insignificant upadhi. Therefore, this, this Paramatma, who is significant, who is limitless, always suffers from a sense of limitation because of identification with his upadhi. Like that actor who may be a billionaire, but then suffers because he is identified with the upadhi, which is a beggar. No reason for him to be unhappy, but this. So, similarly, no reason for human being to be unhappy at all. And we are always unhappy because identified with this insignificant upadhi. Anishaya, Shochati, Mukhyamanaha, entertaining variety of notions about himself, complexes about himself. All the every complex is a source of sorrow, potential sorrow. <coughs> Yushtam yada pashyati, then he sees the other one. So far he was neglecting him, he was always out there in the world. Never looking at what is in the proximity, what is most uh, proximate. Tenth man always looking out there. Then yada pashyati anyamisham, he realizes that the Ishvara, the one that is closest to me, very much. how close? My own nature. Asya Mahimana Vidhi Shoka Vita Shoka and thus when he recognizes his own glory, his own dimension, his own limitlessness, his own fullness and completeness, Vita Shoka becomes free from all shoka, all the grief. <coughs> so both the things are described, the ignorance as well as the knowledge, right in the beginning of this section here. We'll continue. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamada Yapurnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavanta Upunaf Punaha Ishvaro Gurat Medi Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murta Yenamaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyonama